Lumos Maxima. We visited New York and did a scout there, and there is remarkably little of New York 1926 in New York today. There are bits of New York where 1926 still is in evidence, but as a totality, it isn't. And we realized pretty quickly that it would be much more useful to build New York rather than go to New York and film bits of it and then try and change it. So it was easier, more controllable, more manageable for us to build it here on the back lot that leaves them. And we can create it as we want it. We had 15 weeks to build it from start to finish. We got up to 104 carpenters, 90 so plasters, 40 painters, 30 riggers, scenic artists, sculptors. It was a big, big crew. We had a lot of street lighting to do. We had a lot of signage to do, an enormous amount of signage to make, a lot of dressing elements for windows, manhole covers, and on and on and on and on. An enormous part of what we've done has been for that set. very deliberately designed to give us a sense of whole neighbourhoods. But also it was possible always to drop in a green screen and extend that environment. So if you were in the tenement world, you were able to extend the tenement world before transitioning to the other look. And so it makes the canvas huge. It's pretty mind-blowing to me. Um, <clears throat> I was having a moment earlier with Dan, I was standing up at the top of the steps of the bank and just looking down, and the scale of extras, the scale of the set, uh, the detail of the set, it felt like, with all the kind of manholes fuming, it felt, it felt like a sort of old age Hollywood here in Watford. It's incredible, there's all these amazing period details and all the beautiful signage that used to be all over New York. It's really wonderful to experience the time warp of it. I still get just gobsmacked by the level of detail and how the past is literally <laughs> dragged into the present, you know, physically, by the rendering of these incredible, incredible sets. Background is part of the story and the palette that sort of sets the tone for the principles in the world. You see it even if it's subliminal. It's also a really fun part of the design process because sometimes you can do stuff on crowd that you cannot do on the principles. David Yates wanted an authenticity of the period. He wanted a real feeling of the frenetic energy of New York and a real feeling of the texture of people from all over the world coming together and making a city. You've probably heard before how the sets and the costume do a lot of the work for you, but they really, really do. I have a personal reaction based on how the clothes fits, the cut of the clothes, the look of the sets, and it begins to right you or wrong you or it informs where you move. We were on one of the little golf buggies that you travel around Leavesden on, and we were going out to see that New York set. And I'm chatting to the person I'm with, and we turned around a corner, and I saw New York. And I had this complete, all over cold feeling of, oh my God, you think that was an idea? I remember where I was sitting by the window at home when I had that idea. And now look, it's unbelievable. Thank you for all of the support you've given our film. It's a privilege to be a part of this new era of magic. We all hope that you have a brilliant time celebrating and reliving the magic of Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts. Sort of makes me want to be a wizard. <laughs>